Hi, a very good every, uh, morning, everyone. I'm Zafira and I will be, be the MC for today's session. Welcome and thank you for joining us this morning to talk about the leveraging on tax corporate governance framework to strengthen the ESG program. Whether you are um, still working from home or already back to the office, we hope you will find today's webinar informative and helpful for your business. So before we begin, I would like to bring to your attention to our housekeeping rules. Okay, so this will be the housekeeping rules for today. All participants' microphones and video will be disabled throughout the briefing to prevent any interruptions. And number two, if you have any question, kindly use the group chat box function and our panel of speakers will address your question at the end of the session. Last but not least, please do not share this briefing link to any, any unregistered parties. Your cooperation is highly appreciated. <clears throat> so for today's, we have like, um, I would like to introduce you to our moderator for the day, which is like Mr. Ho Meng Hui. Hello, hi Meng Hui. Hi, okay. good morning. <laughs> okay, he is an executive director of Crow KL Tax and Ramahat, who heads the tax compliance and transfer pricing groups. Having been in practice since 1998, Meng Hui has diverse experience in assisting his client on corporate tax related matters, including advertising, advising on tax incentive, corporate restructuring exercises, tax audit, and investigation. Not only that, besides of corporate tax, he is specializes in international tax and transfer pricing advisory assignments. Um, his clients include a wide range of private, public listed, and multinational companies engaged in various of industries. Without further ado, over to you, Minghui. Thank you, Shafira, for the kind introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to all of you. Thank you for taking your time in joining us for this webinar on Tax Corporate Governance Framework, or in short, we call it TCGF. Okay, tax governance is uh, becoming increasingly important in the corporate world, more so for public listed companies and also large multinationals. And uh, in March 2022, uh, Pusan Malaysia launched the public listed company transformation of uh, in short, PLCT program in steering PLCs to accelerate their ESG programs. In highlighting the importance of tax in the G element in ESG, you know, ESG, there's a G element governance. Um, Pusa in his guidebook number two, sustainable, socially responsible, and ethical PLCs states that investors who are increasing looking at how businesses manage and report tax and have increased expectations for clear and transparent tax reporting and strong tax governance. So as we all know, organizations have an obligation to comply with tax legislation. Every company is required to report their tax uh, in the tax filing every year. So and, and, and also a responsibility to their stakeholders to meet expectation of good tax practices. Being a good tax citizen is always linked to good corporate governance which is the G element under the ESG program of your organization. So having a good set of tax governance policies with tax transparency and tax accountability in place will add merits or brownie points to being a good tax citizen. Ultimately, companies that have a robust tax governance system can give confidence to their stakeholders and also the general public that, number one, they are transparent in their tax matters, and number two, they are contributing their fair shares of taxes. So how do you design and set up a good set of tax governance framework in your organization? And where can you look up for, for the gold standard? Well, the answers can be found in the TCGF published by the RRB on the 11th of April, 2022. TCGF is a set of guidelines to help taxpayers to reduce tax risk by evaluating the strength of the tax governance framework and where necessary take corrective actions. TCGF also aims to promote better relationship between taxpayers and the IRB based on the spirit of working cooperatively and collaboratively together. So we will hear more about this in the uh, during our speaker session. With proper implementation, it is expected that TCGF can, can actually assist your organization towards saving time, money, and effort in managing your tax affairs. So we all know that, by now we all know that the TCGF is good, but how does it work and how would that benefit your companies? So ladies and gentlemen, 
this is the reason why they are gathering here today. We need, I have our guest speaker from the RRB in the Japanese, Ashim, and my colleague, Ms. Wong Mani. I would like to wish a good morning to our speakers and uh, welcome to both of them. Uh, in the Japanese, first, we will speak on the nitty gritty found in the TGF published by the RRB, as well as the expectations of the RRB. Many will touch on the tax governance in other countries to obtain an understanding of how similar programs have been implemented in these countries. The speakers will also discuss some interesting issues relating to TCGF together during our panel discussion later. Uh, before we end our session for the day, we will answer your questions that you will be posting in the Q&A. So, ladies and gentlemen, please feel free to raise your questions in the Q&A box. Our speakers will address your questions at the end of the session. Okay, a brief introduction about Injet Japni. Injet Japni is currently the, the, the Director of Tax Audit Operations Division, which is a division under the Tax Compliance Department uh, in Basel, in this Japatan, the Mato Hanchukai. In terms of education background, Injet Japni holds a master degree in Forensic Accounting and Financial Criminology from Mara University of Technology, Malaysia. He also has a bachelor degree in accounting and finance from Lancaster University, UK. Besides, he's also awarded with international certificate in risk management by Institute of Risk Management or IRM and a certificate of, in the Oxford Strategic Innovation Program by University of Oxford, UK. In terms of working experience, InterJAPI has been attached with the Internet in Inland Revenue Board Malaysia for more than 20 years, during which she has worked in uh, different portfolios and capacities, specifically in the areas of tax assessment, tax audit, tax investigation, tax collection, and uh, also tax compliance risk management or TCRM. Uh, he represents IRBM in uh, international conferences with his counterparts from other tax administration from example, for example, UK, Italy, France, and many other countries. Needless to say, he appears regularly as a speaker in tax seminars and conferences both locally and internationally. So uh, without further ado, let me now invite Injet Jafni to, to deliver his presentation on TCGF. Uh, Injet Jafni, good morning to you. Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Hi. How are you? So are you ready? The screen is yours. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I'll pass over the screen to you. Thank you very much. So I shall proceed, yeah. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good morning uh, to all the participants of uh, Crow Webinar 2022. Um, first of all, uh, I would like thank, to thank you, uh, the Crow KL, for inviting uh, LHDN, or we also known as Hasil to today's uh, webinar to share our insight uh, on the tax corporate governance framework, or also known as the TCGF. So, um, first of all, uh, I'm very delighted uh, to present the webinar session today, uh, which is uh, on the specific topic uh, entitled The Leveraging on the TCGF, the Tax Corporate Governance uh, Framework to strengthen the ESG program, as mentioned by our uh, moderator. So for Hasil, we believe that uh, it is uh, imperative that TCGF is uh, being implemented at this point of time, especially for the large, uh, for the public listed companies and also the large size company, and also for the specialized industry taxpayer, because it is now seen as the essential uh, program and it's uh, an important movement for the organization uh, to partake and in order to administer yeah, tax risk management yeah so to be more effective so as you can see for the past seven month periods uh, this year since the tcgf program being launched uh, uh, we at hasil have received uh, what we call numerous positive responses and a lot of general inquiries about this TCGF, uh, especially from our taxpayers, the large taxpayer, and also from their tax agent. So, particularly concerning the implementation of the TCGF in Malaysia, uh, we can see that the number of queries is increasing uh, every day. And 
I just want to say thank you all for the support and for the res positive response that we received. Uh, I also would like to take uh, this opportunity to share uh, with all the participants today the essence of our TCGF program uh, within this time frame given to me by the organizer and to highlight why TCGF should be adopted, which is to strengthen the ESG, the environmental social governance, or better known as, uh, which is equally a big issue eh, discussed around the globe at this moment. So next. So for my presentation, uh, we'll cover these uh, topics, one on the introduction, and then on the TCGF itself, and also the key takeaways for the participants today. Okay, next. Okay, dearest participants, uh, as you may have probably uh, noticed, uh, TCGF has been one of the most discussed topics uh, in many tech seminars conducted locally and internationally. So I suppose this is all comes down in response to the need for the good uh, tax corporate governance standard, which is uh, initiated by the OECD, uh, the Organization for the Economic Cooperation and Development, uh, in the practice of the corporate governance and internal control as part of the requirements for the, as you can see from the slide, uh, the, sorry, uh, I think I missed the slide here. Uh, maybe uh, the one that control the slide, is it previous slide? Yeah, this one first. Thank you. So as you can see from the slide, there's a document produced by the OECD on the cooperative compliance. Yeah. So uh, in terms of the cooperative compliance, uh, it has been uh, evolving uh, for many years. And it was uh, initially referred as the enhanced uh, relationship, but later was rebranded uh, to cooperative compliance in 2013. So you can see the document in the slide. Uh, but then the concept was uh, broadly viewed as an exchange of greater upfront of transparency by the taxpayer in return for more certainty from the tax authorities. It's more uh, relates to the trust between the taxpayers and also the tax administrators. So this program may reduce the compliance costs and also simultaneously improve the efficiency Due to, due to the better utilization of resources by both parties, the taxpayer and also the tax administration. So moving on to the next slide. Uh, now this is the, the, the slide. Huh? So this slide shows what is meant by the tax corporate governance. So tax corporate governance encompasses the rules, relationships, system and process under which decisions are made and authority is exercised and control within the organization in regard to the tax matters. So it comprises the mechanism by which businesses, the office holders, and those in control are held into account. So as you can see, there is a growing expectation for organizations around the world, uh, particularly here in Malaysia, to have a level of governance that will ensure accountability, transparency, and integrity of their tax system in line with the uh, tax administration's rule and also the OECD's aspiration. So in essence, the strong tax governance framework established by the organization uh, comprises of the techniques and processes that can identify the tax risk assess the tax risk and also set out the appropriate actions to mitigate the impact of those tax risks. So when we talk about tax corporate governance, it will be related, uh, rate will be related to the tax risk in the organization. So when we call, talking about the tax risk, we are talking about the compliance risk, which comprises of the registration risk, compliance in the registration, compliance in the filing of returns, uh, compliance in terms of the reporting, 
the correct amount of tax and also compliant in terms of the payment. Payment not only on the balance of the tax or tax due, but also on the uh, bayaran pendahuluan, such as the CP204 yeah, for the corporate taxpayers. So as you can see, an, an effective TCGF can cultivate the level of confidence that an organization is reporting and paying the right amount of tax so that enabling the organization to achieve greater certainty in relation to its tax affairs and also will provide greater assurance to the tax administration if in relation for hasil on the tax reporting by the organization. Okay, next slide. Next slide. So from this slide, you can see uh, the TCGF, the Tax Corporate Governance, uh, has been in the news everywhere very recently. So as you can see, this nothing short of surprises, uh, so to speak. So we can anticipate that uh, its presence uh, will change the landscape of the tax compliance matters in Malaysia eminently, especially for the large among the large corporate taxpayers and also the public listed uh, companies. Yeah? So as you can see, the existence could sub of TCGF could support an organization in so many ways. For example, an organization will be able to articulate its attitude toward the tax risk by providing a good level of comfort to all of its stakeholders. So stakeholders also include HASIL. Yeah? So this is because all the tax strategies, policies and processes are standardized and integrated within the wider organization and therefore tax risk can be maintained at an acceptable level. Or, but that it also depends on the risk appetite of that organization in relation to their tax risk. Yeah? And also, an organization will be able to achieve greater certainty in respect to its tax affairs, where in the absence of a clear tax compliance control framework, there may be result in various parts of the organization pursuing different and possibly conflicting strategy yeah, among the department in that organization. So in another example, TCGF can also promote early resolution of tax issues in an organization and as and when tax risks are identified through the internal control being established. So in the long run, tax corporate governance potentially could save time, money and effort in managing its tax affairs. So as you can see, an organization that have a weak tax governance may not be destroyed immediately, but we can certainly anticipate that it will be doomed and gloom to failure soon or later, or maybe subject to the tax audit or tax investigation. Yeah, and as a result of neg neglecting the practice of good tax corporate governance, an organization may also likely to suffer the additional reputational damage with loss of clients and also discontent uh, investors. Ladies and gentlemen, moving to the next slide. Okay, next slide. As I mentioned earlier, the initiative towards cooperative compliance uh, promoted by OECD and the tax governance practices have long been implemented in many countries, including, as you can see in the slide, uh, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, Australia, Singapore, and other developing uh, developed countries. So this initiative was targeted uh, among large size and specialized company taxpayer, which is the same concept that are we that Hasil currently promoting in Malaysia. As you can see, in UK, Australia, and our neighboring country, uh, Singapore. Singapore are the three countries that are known to be very proactive in championing this initiative to some extent. So you can see in UK, uh, it is mandatory 
uh, it's in the law that large size companies to make announcement and disclose their tax strategies in relation to their UK tax affairs or their website before the end of their accounting period, or there will be severe repercussion in the event of non-conformance. Yeah? While in Australia, the tax authority, which is the uh, Australian Tax Office, ATO, has introduced a special program called Structured Governance uh, Assurance Program. And since the reception of the program called Justified Trust ATO, actually, as you can see in Australia, they have introduced this type of uh, compliance initiative uh, way more than 10 years ago or 15 years ago. And uh, the, the, the first program that they've developed actually called the Voluntary Tax Transparency Code that aiming at the large company taxpayers. And back to our neighboring country, Singapore, uh, recently has, in 2022 also has been introduced the uh, Singapore's tax risk management and control framework for the corporate income tax. This uh, following their success uh, execution program on the GST, which is called the Assisted Compliance Assurance uh, Program. So there you see, we in Malaysia cannot be complacent and we are very proud to say that we are finally jumped on the bandwagon and very pleased with the progress of the TCGF thus far here in Malaysia. The okay, next. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, in Malaysia, there are many efforts that have been taken by other government agencies in relation to the corporate governance. There are several guidelines and frameworks uh, that have been drawn up and companies especially the public listed company, the large company that are encouraged to adhere to them by these agencies. So we can see, I think mentioned by our moderator, we have the sustainability index by the FTSD for good Busa Malaysia, the internal control framework introduced by the Bank of Malaysia and the guidelines on tax governance by the, uh, introduced uh, by, proposed by MIA and MICPA. So, in relation to this topic, today's topic, I'm interested to share with you uh, about the FTSE for Good Pusat Malaysia, as this is uh, what we call very relevant, relevant to our topic to link the TCGF with the ESG uh, program and initiative. Okay, so. You can see from the slide yeah, on the FTSE and also the other ESG ratings uh, uh, model. Yeah. So what is it about the sustainability index FTSE for good FUSA Malaysia? Well, it is designed to highlight the companies that demonstrate a leading approach to addressing the environmental, social and governance risk, or we better known as ESG risk. In fact, the purpose of this index is to highlight companies that score highly in measures of the CSR, the Corporate Social Responsibility. And there are enormous benefits of inclusion for company to be included in this FTSE for Good Index series, as they are regularly used by large mainstream institutional investors looking to meet an ASG mandate and in addition, many companies also use their enclosure in the index as a way to show their commitment to having strong ESG performance. So investors often cite risk management against the negative externalities or external costs that arise as an effect of another party's activity. As a key driver in choosing to implement a responsible investment approach. And also in addition to making a positive contribution to the societies in which they operate. So companies with good ESG performance are often considered to have lower level of risk than those which have not taken steps to mitigate the material ESG risk. And as you can see, in the emerging markets, 
in particular, strong performance on the ESG criteria is often seen as an indicator of quality factors and good management of that organization or company. So companies are assessed on issues relating to the, as you can see from the slide, the 14 ESG teams. And one of the teams is concerning the tax transparency. So this is where TCGF is coming. So by participating in our TCGF program, we are able to support and strengthen one of the jigsaw puzzle pieces as it were in relation to these 14 ESG teams. So TCGF will answer or will help company to meet the uh, criteria of the tax transparency under the ESG. All right. Next slide. So ladies and gentlemen, that's the first part of my presentation now on the tax corporate governance framework itself. So for today's uh, presentation, I'm not going to dwell into details since we have published actually two documents yeah, uh, on the, our website, as you can see from the slide here, the tax corporate governance framework and also the guidelines of the tax corporate governance framework. Uh, these two documents need to be read together and to further provide uh, clarity and further explain on our expectation. So we provide also the FAQ. Yeah. So as you can see, this TCGF introduced by Hasil is to show uh, our Hasil's uh, expectation towards the organization in managing or in governing their tax matters yeah, on their tax governance. As for today, so, uh, for today's presentation, um, my aim is to provide assist uh, assistance to all the participants on to understand better on the topic of the TCGF and perhaps to untie or to uh, any knot that needs untying so, so so to speak and to answer any question through our q and a uh, session later okay next so from this slide uh, we just want to highlight on share with the participants, all the participants, the quick overview of our current TCGF program. So as you can see, TG TCGF was launched by Hasil uh, on the first March of 2022. And the program is targeted towards the large size company with the turnover in excess of 1 million annually or the government league or state-owned companies and companies with the excellent tax compliance record. So meaning that we also look into your tax compliance record. Compliance that I mentioned before, that relates to the registration, to the filing, com complying to the uh, filings uh, 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 rules, and also on the reporting the correct income and tax, and also payment of the tax due or also for the payment of the CP204 for the last uh, company, for the company. Yeah. So as you can see, uh, for this uh, program, we have two phases. Phase one involves the pilot project and phase two will uh, more on the full implementation. So when we're talking about the phase one, during the phase one, we are more and uh, working with a lot of engagement program involving the professional bodies, uh, tax agent, and also selected uh, large taxpayers. Yeah. Um, so our uh, during the phase one, we uh, our strategy is on the what we call the AES awareness, education, and services. Yeah, and. To create uh, what we call to for because this is uh, what we call the phase of the learning curve 
not only for the hasil but also for the taxpayers so that is why we also during the phase one we have the pilot project so through this uh, pilot project uh, we'll be able to improve the framework and guidelines that can benefit all the taxpayers involved yeah so from the slide you can see the full implementation would be in year 2024 but if the good response we receive during the pilot project then uh, maybe we can accelerate the date for the full implementation okay next so these slides uh, on the benefits of having to participate in the tcgf program yeah so the 64 million dollar question to everyone on the benefits yeah so as you can see from the slide it avoids the potential competition in an audit or investigation with a sale and instead of the confrontation the whole process here involves cooperating and engaging hassle on a proactive basis to avoid any surprises and to provide taxpayers with certainty on the position taken this is a win-win situation for both taxpayers and also hassle and also the other benefit is that tax risk can be identified and manage with a better chance of avoiding penalties additionally there will be a better cash flow management and accurate tax reporting for the benefit both taxpayers and also hasil and not to mention substantial time saver that we also benefit hasil and taxpayers when it comes to avoiding tax audit or reducing the level of uh, security scrutiny yeah, on the compliance program okay next Next slide. So from this slide, this TCGF will help the organization to improve image and reputation, increase the tax authority and uh, organization stakeholders' confidence and assurance, reduce the audit and tax inquiries reduce the compliance cost and a better management of the tax affairs by the organization. Next. Okay, this slide also part of the benefits of the TCGF. What does it mean by the no or lower penalty? So I would like to take this opportunity to explain a bit more about the no penalty imposition for this program. So in our published guideline, stated that taxpayers who fulfill the requirements and criteria listed by LBM will be deemed to be qualified for the benefits of this program and shall not be subjected to audit and investigation. And this also includes no penalty imposition. So our assessment from the review process, which will be used to determine which organization are qualified. And of course, one of the criteria is that they must be compliant participants. But what will happen if we found that there are different views in the interpretation of the tax legislation according to the taxpayers and also hasil? So these differing views are definitely a matter of uncertainty, which can be avoided if the TCGF is robustly implemented in the organization. So what does it mean? So for, for instance, yeah, if the organization already seeks advice about the technical issues from an approved tax agent or from HACEL and acts accordingly in HACEL's opinion, there shouldn't be any penalty imposed because the organization already acted reasonably. This process will have to be properly documented for proof if the tax control framework is in place. In different situation, what will happen if in the process of preparing the TCGF, the taxpayer realizes 
certain deficiencies in the operating procedure, such as, for example, there are some non-compliant matters discovered in the income tax matter or in the withholding tax payment. So the question is, will HASIL impose penalty for the late filing and payment of these outstanding duties once the TCGF assessment is complete? Okay. HASIL answer to that is that in the process of preparing the TCGF, the company or the organization shall make a voluntary disclosure to HASIL. If the uh, organization has discovered that there are deficiencies that led to the income tax or withholding tax non-compliant, for example, then the penalty imposition will be in accordance with our provision as stated in our tax audit framework. Yeah? However, if the organization is already in the TCG program, considering that proper review has been carried out by the organization, by the independent reviewer, and HASIL, then the irregularities found can indeed be considered for lower or no penalty imposition, but on this matter, we will review them on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis. Okay, next. Moving on to this uh, slide, I just want to share the scope of the TCGF if any organization want to join the TCG program. So these are the uh, items that you have to uh, consider in developing the TCGF yeah, for any organization. For example, the income tax, if a, a petroleum tax is applied to you, the RPGT, the withholding tax, and also the tax incentive. Uh, you can see from the slide here, there are 14 items. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. So next. So now I'm going to talk about the TCG program, the processes. In step one, the organization must first satisfy all the prerequisites, and they also have to conduct a preliminary self-assessment to see whether the basic building block of TCG that we have spelled out in our TCGF, in our documentation, the tax corporate government framework, are in place, then only then the companies or the organization are ready to proceed with the submission of a participation form. And we will issue the notice of acceptance within the 14 days from the submission of the participation form. So when I'm talking about the TC program, actually it's, uh, it will happen during the full implementation in 2024. However, it also already apply for the pilot project we are currently um, doing. So in step two, organizations are required to have their procedures in TCG to be reviewed by the independent reviewer. This uh, is quite an important exercise, really. And the independent reviewer can be a public accounting entity or independent party in the organization, for example, the internal audit team, as long as the respective team are accredited practitioners. And in step, step three, the self uh, review assessment report and report findings prepared by the independent reviewer have to be submitted to HASIL. So this exercise has been done, has to be done yeah, within six months from the date of approval of participation. In step four, uh, HASIL will conduct a preliminary review on documents submitted by the taxpayer. This process may require uh, further engagement, meeting, discussion uh, between the taxpayers and also HASIL. Uh, and the period, the time taken will be around six months of, for the assessment from the date of the submission. And in step five, HASIL will award the participation status uh, of the TCGF program for the successful taxpayers. And just to highlight this, uh, this process flow 
is the standard flow for the CCGF program, but it's a little bit different for the company that joined the pilot project. Because for the company that joined the public project, uh, we are the one that offer them to join. Yeah. Okay, next. So this, night, this slide uh, demonstrate the TCG review. So when it comes to the TCG's review, by Hasil, the one in the box, the yellow box, eh? Hasil will be interested in performing the adequacy review and the effectiveness review on the organization tax control framework. As you can see, the tax control framework is the central or the main brain in the CCGF of the any organization. Yeah. Okay, next. So these are the two reviews that are going to be conducted by Hasil. The adequacy review will test on how adequate the organization's TCGF at certain point in time. So the core of the verification is whether the organization TCGF adhere to the six basic principles of TCGF that we outline in our TCG framework documents. Yeah? So while the effectiveness review, the aims is to test the effectiveness of the organization's tech control framework, the TCF, within a given time. So the review mostly includes the verification of the uh, organization TCF, tax control framework, in terms of the correctness and the completeness of the design, whether uh, this is the main part, it is functional and effective. And in addition, the TCF, the tax control framework, must not only exist in the legal form, yeah, but also in the substance. So they have to be effective and functional. Okay, next. So next, these are the six uh, tax governance principles, uh, our key focus area in the organization TCGF that the organization might adhere. Yeah? So these are the basically what the items that we will look into during our adequacy review. So I'm not going to explain further on these uh, six items uh, because we already have heard as there's a detailed explanation in our TCGF guidelines. Eh? All right, next. So when we're talking about the TCF component, the tax control framework, so these are the components that we will do into. Yeah. This also we have uh, spelled out in our TCGF framework and also TC, uh, guidelines to the TCGF. Yeah, this is actually for when we want to conduct the effectiveness uh, review. Okay, I will just explain a little bit on the tax control. Yeah, on the control testing. Sorry. Next, next slide. Okay, so this slide highlight the control testing. So in developing the robust tax control framework, the robust tax control framework, and organizations shall conduct control testing, which is to identify the strength and the weaknesses of its current tax risk management that being set up. And the testing of the TCGF should combine the monitoring process with the maintenance of the framework. What is it mean by the maintenance of the uh, framework is it has to be in line with any changes in the uh, law because you can see, as you can see the income tax law is changing every year so the maintenance should take place on a regular basis and uh, also to follow any fundamental changes to the business for example there's a major uh, there's a merger or acquisition uh, by the company so this also part of the uh, things that they have to update, the organization have to update in their TCGF. Okay, next. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, this slide highlight a bit about the TCG disclosure. So basically, 
Once the organization join the TCG program, uh, the organization must disclose its approach to tax by way of publishing the organization tax strategy or the tax policy. So how, what is the format? How should you disclose? So we propose for you to follow, to, to use the MIA, MICPA tax governance guide uh, for the disclosure practice and when reporting how tax lists are ratified, managed and monitored. So any organization, uh, the organization also may also refer to any internal control framework or generally accepted risk management principles that are applied to tax. Yeah. Okay, I think this will be the last slide. Next slide. So ladies and gentlemen, to conclude my presentation, uh, I would like to highlight on the following uh, key takeaways. Okay, next. TCGF is a voluntary compliant initiative that an organization or company may participate in to demonstrate that it has a good tax governance and tax risk management. So by adopting the framework will help the companies to attain and maintain good standards of tax governance and by having a strong and proper corporate tax governance framework in place will also help the companies to in sending the correct message to the tax, tax authority to hassle and their tax holders that their companies are socially responsible. And lastly, an effective tax corporate governance framework can cultivate the level of confidence that an organization is reporting and paying the right amount of tax, enabling the organization to achieve greater certainty in relation to its tax affairs. And also, last but not least, TCG will further complement and strengthen the overall ESG of any organization or corporation in general. And it is certainly a big plus at the moment. So with that, I end my presentation. Thank you very much. So I have over back to our moderator. Thank you. Terima kasih indeed, Daphne, for your insightful sharing on uh, TCGF. Uh, later, we will invite you again back during our panel discussion and Q&A. In the meantime, maybe I would like to uh, invite our next speaker, Wang Man Yi, to present her uh, session. Uh, our uh, Wang Man Yi is my colleague. Uh, she is an uh, executive director of ProCal Tax. She leads the tax audit investigation team, as well as she's also the core leaders of the tax compliance team. Uh, Mani, now I will now would like to pass over the screen to you. Thank you, Minghui. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much to Inchit Japni for giving us such a comprehensive overview of the TCG app. So for my sessions here, I will uh, run too quickly on my slides here and reserve more time for the panel discussions and the Q&A sessions. So, <clears throat> okay. So generally, uh, I think you can hear from Minghui, from Inchit Javni that a good corporate tax governance is increasingly become a team that boards are expected to include their corporate governance frameworks. So the tax planning, <clears throat> compliance and the risk management that have traditionally uh, been thought of as a matter to be handled by the finance team only. <clears throat> Sorry. But now with more the attentions uh, focused on the tax in the public arena, uh, company executive and the boards should ensure that the tax risk management is part of their corporate governance uh, frameworks. With these, the tax authorities around the world also implementing the initiative, uh, for example, like disclosing the tax pay, the tax strategies of the large companies, uh, and these are becoming much more transparent to the public. So, okay. So if let's say, uh, when you look into this uh, slide here, it outlines the global trends of uh, tax governance in, in overseas in uh, other than Malaysia here. I think just now, Inchit Jaffin have briefly explained on the UK, uh, Australia, 
and Singapore as well. I just want to highlight a point that in UK here, uh, uh, like uh, like Injun Yakin mentioned, it is a mandatory uh, disclosure or the publications of the tax strategies annually since 2016. And then they have another requirements as well uh, on the senior accounting official, SAO certifications on the CFO <laughs> or the equivalence to sign of whether appropriate tax accounting arrangements are in place. So if let's say a company that, uh, that, that, that are under the requirement but do not publish their tax strategies annually will be penalized. And then for this SAO, the CFO himself will be personally liable for the penalty for the non-compliance of these sections here. So you also can see that uh, tax governance also exists in other countries like US, New Zealand, China, Japan, and Malaysia is, uh, has been introduced in Malaysia in April 2022. So uh, just now, Inche Japanese also have uh, given us certain uh, linkage or connect the dots between uh, tax and ESG. I just want to highlight the points here where uh, GRI 2007, uh, GRI uh, is the Global Reporting Initiative that released the a new reporting standards of tax, uh, then that come into effect in 1st January 2021. And then in this GRI 2007, they focused on four pillars uh, on the 207-1 approach to tax, 207-2 on tax governance, control and risk management, that's three on the stakeholder engagement, management of concerns of uh, related to tax, and the fourth pillar is on the CPCR, the country by country reporting. So this, uh, this is the first global reporting standards uh, on taxation. So this GRI tax standard currently is still voluntary basis and then it is used dependent on whether the, or not the tax is a material matter of that entity. So when back to Malaysia, when we look into our Malaysian's uh, tax corporate governance frameworks, where you can see that our uh, IRB uh, TCGF is quite aligned with GRI 207, where the first to the second pillar and the third pillars, we all are aligned with the GRI 207 and we do not address on the CBCR under uh, this uh, TCGF here. So on other uh, uh, legislations, like being mentioned by uh, Inchet Jaffney, like the BUSA Tax Governance Guide and the FTSE for, for Goods uh, BUSA Malaysia in Tax. So you can see that the way that they are looking into the tax governance is also quite aligned with the GRI 207. So this is the model of uh, or, or, or the main pillow uh, that being drafted uh, and a lot of legislations that being making reference to. So from the global perspective, the Dow Jones Sustainability Index, DJ, SI is operated by a rating agency, S&P Global, which evaluates companies around the world in terms of the ESG criteria. And then uh, DS, DJSI also uh, including the tax policy uh, principles, strategies. So it's quite similar, quite aligned with GRI. So you, you can see that as a quick comparison, our Malaysia uh, uh, TCGF is quite similar or, or the focuses is also quite aligned with all the respective legislations. So when you look from this slide, uh, you could be thinking that if your company would like to implement uh, tax governance, you may want to uh, hit in two or more birds with one stone. So when you design, when you implement your tax governance, you may want to satisfy because uh, satisfy all the conditions or, or meet the desired outcome that you want because uh, by implementing implementing tax governance definitely needs a lot of time in terms of the study, implementations, and the uh, uh, change plans as well to implement the change plans. So I think you can hear, hear from uh, Inche Jaffney on a lot of uh, things relating to this TCGF and you could be wondering and trying to relate to your companies 
is my company having a robust tax management process and control? So here could be certain examples or to give you certain ideas on the areas for considerations. So you may ask yourself that are the tax strategies, tax risk and governance policy being implemented between the tax functions and throughout the businesses or only currently only uh, being managed by the uh, finance team but without designating or without uh, going through the entire supply chain of the business the, the, the next questions that you may ask like what measures are in place that trigger the commercial teams on tax considerations whenever they win any new business or generate new income because you may need to study how is the tax implications on this uh, new business model the new income the taxability of the income if you have any change or any new activities, then this may lead to unexpected tax consequences. So what are the processes that has been in place of your, uh, uh, within your company for the tax considerations? Have you captured all the changes in tax law? Like uh, Inche Jackie also mentions, updating your team with the uh, uh, tax law and updates is very important. Uh, then only you can identify and relate uh, whether those tax issues that need to be addressed by your management. <clears throat> so does management have a formal mechanism in place to report regularly to the boards on material tax issues and risk? So what type of training that being provided uh, to your internal tax team? How often is their tax knowledge being updated? How robust of your accounting system and tax reporting processes? Because this is very important to extract the uh, correct tax information for analysis. Just for example, like uh, the deductibility of the expenses, whether any capital expenditure included uh, into certain expenses that need tax adjustment. How do you identify that? So how do you tag that? How do you ensure the existing tax control is adequate? And has it been reviewed by any independent consultant, uh, consultant in the last three years? So because you may not know, <clears throat> you may not know what you don't know. So you may need to get another pair of eyes to look into the existing controls that you have to see the adequacy and the effectiveness of the in internal controls. <clears throat> So in practice, how do we start? So certain company may say that I would like to start, but how to start and where to start. So this may give you certain uh, guideline or, or, or give you a certain idea on how to embark this uh, tax governance uh, uh, process in your company. So I think the first step that you need to do uh, you may need to assess your current tax control frameworks and then uh, you may need to form a project team because this is like a formal endorsement of the uh, TCGF uh, setting up in your firm and then it set the tone from the top as well. So that's why it's very important to form a project team. Then we may need to assess the role and responsibilities of all stakeholders because currently uh, for certain companies, uh, uh, could be all the roles and tax responsibilities are lying with a uh, finance team uh, it, uh, on the operational team and, and instead of uh, growing to the, going to the strategic level or the board team. So they need to have certain role and responsibilities of uh, all stakeholders. <clears throat> Then you also can see that the scope of the TCGF uh, can be very wide and cover all the 14 items like the income tax, reporting tax. So we may need to identify all types of taxes which the company is liable for and define the tax rates to be covered. So for example, if your group of companies do not have any entity in Labuan, do not have any dealings with Labuan, so Labuan tax may not be a concern or could be excluded uh, from this study here. So you need to identify what are the relevant uh, taxes to your company. Then you may need to access the current procedures and controls in place. Just give you some uh, simple examples like, um, like on the employer's uh, obligations or the responsibilities on notifying the IRB uh, by using the CP22 when there is a notification, this is a notification for a new employee or CP21 when there is a cessation of the uh, employment or leaving of Malaysia for more than three months. So <clears throat> uh, this control may not be in place because uh, 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 this usually is handled by HR 
PHR team, and then uh, they may not aware that these two obligations, these two notifications is also applicable to the local employees, because most of the time we have a perception that this CP21 and CP22s are only applicable when we record expatriate. So uh, whether this control is in place uh, within your company to ensure your compliance on the notifications, like withholding tax as and when you make payments to your non-residents, when you make payments to your agents, distributor, have you complied? How do you comply with the withholding tax uh, uh, requirements? Then you may need to conduct uh, the operational risk assessment from the uh, operational and business review. So you also need to conduct some transactional analysis for certain significance or new transaction. For example, for certain companies, when they enter into any new related party transactions, they have a policy that uh, these related party transactions must be subject to uh, transfer pricing review, make sure the pricings are at arm's length. So do you have that kind of control when you enter into a new transaction? Then you may need to review your tax and accounting results in the past few years, then evaluate the tax risk areas and the strategic tax issues. Then you may need to categorize the tax risk that you have and grade the tax risk that you have for, for the prioritization so that you can assess the risk based on the quantitative and the qualitative perspective, then conduct a gap analysis, propose the implementation plan or remediation plan, like um, if let's say there is any deficiency in the current control that resulting in uh, any errors, unintended error or mistake that you notice uh, during the process, would you like to make voluntary disclosure? How do you want to handle your voluntary disclosures? So after crafting out your proposed implementation plan, then uh, you may move to stage three on the uh, implementation stage. So you can see that from both uh, stage one and stage two, the step one and two here. So we all these items are surroundings on the key focus areas, like the role and responsibility, the control frameworks, the control testing, uh, management of tax rates, significant or new transactions, the tax and accounting results. So during your implementation, your purpose, your main objective eventually is to satisfy the prerequisites and complete your self-review uh, checklist. So you may say that I, I'm still uncertain. The company is still uncertain whether do we want to participate into this TCGF uh, program. But I would, the company would like to have certain tax governance in place because you can hear there are several, there are lots of benefits for having uh, tax governance in order to mitigate your tax risk management. So you may still go through the implementations, you may still uh, uh, put in place certain tax controls between your entities. So you may need to document the tax strategies, policy, process, internet controls, and SOP. So this could include all the code of practice, how your company manage tax risk, your company attitude to the tax planning. So the level of risk that your company can tolerate with, and then the relationship with IRBM. So all these things need to be documented. Then you implement the control activities to mitigate the tax risk and add value because other than mitigating tax risk, I think adding value is also another very important element for having a, a good corporate governance because you may not want to miss certain opportunity or tax efficiency uh, uh, from, the, from the transactions that you have. So this implementation stage may involve modifications or enhancements of your system because you may need to integrate certain control, internal controls into the system. Then you may need to do the people management. You may reallocate the people that you have within your company for compliance, to so looks into advisory planning, all these areas. Then you may set the tones on the communication, then uh, get ready the training uh, module for the people involved. Then. Uh, you may be you need you still need to do the control testing and review. So this may give you a, a brief idea on how would you like to uh, start the uh, tax gov tax governance in your companies. And if let's say you need any help on that, I think you can do it within the companies. How 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 we could uh, uh, work together on this part? Uh, some certain companies will say that. Uh, can we do certain parts that we have 
first, then after that, we get your team to reveal that that is something possible. Uh, and we can discuss about how to work together to achieve the desired outcome that we want. So this is just a preliminary part on the uh, idea for how to kickstart the uh, corporate governance, the tax governance uh, in your company. Okay, these are the things that I would like to share here. So I think we can move to the panel discussions. Over it to you, Minghui. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mani, for the quick overview in connecting the different dots found in the TCGF uh, for our audience from the practical point of view. So I think that uh, makes things a uh, more clear. Uh, like what <clears throat> Mani has shown on the screen, it is now time for us to move on to the panel discussion. And we would like to invite uh, Injet Japni again uh, up on the screen uh, together with Mani. Welcome back, uh, Injet Japni. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, Mihu. Okay, good to see you again. Yeah. Okay, we would like to quickly move on to the first question that we have, I have for you, actually, Mr. Jaffney, on this tax audit program for TCG participants. Um, one, of the, one of the benefits for participating in TCG is that the taxpayer can expect reduced scrutinization from the IRB, which is a good news. So in other words, IRB will not conduct any tax audit on the taxpayer who participated in TCG, or the frequency will be much lower on the taxpayer during the period. So with that understanding, our questions to you is that we would like to, you to share more about this statement uh, that is found in the TCGF on no or lesser tax audit to be conducted. And the second question relating to that is that in light of this TCGF, uh, will you be able to comment whether companies who did not participate in the TCG program, uh, would they be likely become the targets of a tax audit by the IRB? Uh, is it Japanese? I think you maybe. So one question in this one question, there are two questions, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So first of all, I just want to highlight uh, when we introduced the TCGF uh, in uh, through these two documents, yeah, that's corporate governance framework and also the guidelines to the TCGF. Actually, we want to encourage, especially for the public listed companies, to have their TCGF in place in their organization uh, and to further what we call uh, encourage them to develop the tax governance in their organization, we come up with this what we call the TCG program. So actually, uh, actually the TCG program is uh, another example of the cooperative compliance initiative. The one that I mentioned during my present presentation just, just now. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, First of all, we encourage all taxpayers, especially for the public listed companies, for the large companies to have tax governance in place. So that is why we have this document that to set our expectation what the organization should have. And in relation to the benefits, actually, uh, if you refer back to my presentation, I already highlighted the benefits of having a good tax governance and to have a, what we call a, a proper documentation of your yeah, tax governance and tax governance framework. Okay, in relation to your question, it's more towards the benefits for the company or the organization that joined the TCG program. So, meaning that for the qualified organization that fulfill the, requ the requirements, yeah, criteria listed by RBM, by HASIL, uh, they shall not subject to audit or application. That, what I mean is, if the company or the organization has been accepted into the TCG program, where the status is for three years, and still subject to our terms and condition, um, that is why you can see, uh, we, from this program, because it's part and parcel of the cooperative compliance initiative, to encourage more engagement, more disclo uh, voluntary disclosure. So that is not that, like for example, if the organization already in the TCG program, uh, any uh, non-compliance identified, the organization should 
quickly notify us. Not if like we found out by ourselves. That is why we encourage more on the poultry compliance. All right. So that is the beauty of this program. We encourage more engagement. It's huh? very bad. Uh, you were mentioning there was there may not be any penalty imposed if the there's yeah. a disqualification. Yeah. 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 If the company is in the program, uh, as you can see, uh, we encourage voluntary disclosure. There will be a what you call consideration also for uh, no penalty or lower penalty. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right? Okay. That's uh, one question answer, right? <laughs> and then on the second questions, uh, like I mentioned just now, we encourage all to participate in the TCG uh, to have a TCGF in their organization and to further attract uh, what we call takers. So we introduce the TCG program. However, we will not penalize company that doesn't want to join the TCG program. Yeah, uh, so it, we still follow what we have, uh, I think for the past 20, uh, 15 years, when we come up with the uh, tax compliance activity, such as tax audit, we are more, uh, we are trying to become more transparent in terms of the selection of cases. Also, we already select, uh, what we call, spread out in our tax audit framework. So it's not like if you not join the TCG program, we will audit, no. It still depends on the risk assessment. Yeah, the case selection for the tax audit will still be based on the risk assessment. What you call tax comply risk management under hasil that we already spell out in our current tax audit. So fall back to the normal procedures, and there's no additional scrutiny for companies not in the DCG. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that at least. Take the burden off of those who are not complying. Yeah. Because the, the thing is, uh, is this program is a voluntary program. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Understand. It's not mandatory. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for uh, answering. Um, maybe we move on to the next question. This question is on the consideration for participating in TCG. Uh, it, I would like to address this question to Mani. Taxpayers who wish to participate in the TCGF are required to consider additional time costs to do so. Specifically, the one that we, are, we can think of, uh, like for example, you need to employ additional resources to uh, participate in this type of project, they engage tax consultants to assist them, uh, maybe also spend time discuss, to discuss with the IRB's representatives and also preparing uh, additional paperwork just to meet the requirements. So the question is that, are there any other cause of consideration the taxpayers or the companies should be aware of? For example, uh, are there any fees payable to the RV in order to participate in this uh, DCG? Uh, Mandy? I answer the first uh, easier part first. Uh, in terms of any fee payable to IRB for participating TCG, uh, our IRB is very kind and there is no fee payable for participating uh, TCGF programs. And in terms of what other considerations, uh, for in order to encourage people to participate this uh, TCG program, I think IRB is also very kind and make uh, lots of announcements relating to no or less tax audit. The first thing, no or less penalty as well. These are the two very attractive points. And then uh, in, in, in terms of the uh, considerations and then uh, like uh, those companies that would like to set up the tax governance definitely need to involve a lot of uh, resources in terms of uh, money, uh, manpower, the time to be spent as well. So, and, and eventually, taxpayer still being the taxpayer, they may still be get skeptical in terms of no or less tax audit to be conducted or, or, or the no or less penalty. But I, I would like to encourage the taxpayer to think from another perspective. When you put on the tax covenants uh, in your companies, this will involve a very long process like uh, identifying the tax rates. You need to assess the tax rates. You need to set out the action plan to manage and mitigate the tax rates. With all the procedures involved, definitely you will be able to reduce all those unintended error or mistakes. And you may be able to uh, discover certain mistakes that you have done in the past and, and rectify that in the future. And then uh, by having a 
good governance, then you may have certain control list in place in terms of the text documents requested for the records keeping. Then this, <clears throat> this may reduce the chances on the lack of or absence of the supporting documents to defend your tax positions in the future. And then you also can see that the material transaction, the significant transactions or new transactions has been analyzed properly and, and being reported to the management to make an informed decisions. So it will definitely provide certainty on the company tax affairs is well managed. So it gives you certainty on that part. And if the tax rates are not being addressed appropriately, this may adversely impact the brand image and the reputations of the companies. So this may take into uh, all this may, may, may take into consideration before you decide whether do, do you want to set up a tax, uh, corporate governance, do you want to participate into this uh, TCG? So in short, what I can say is that you may, um, may, need, to may need to go through some short-term pains, but there will be many, many long-term gains in return. Yes. That's, that's, a, that's a good thing about it participating in this TCG. Okay, in the interest of time, I would like to move on to the next question on question three. Okay, uh, this is relating to whether there's any additional benefits in terms of uh, no penalty or waiver of penalty. Because if you look across the causeway, the Singapore in Inner Revenue Authority of Singapore, IRS, actually announced that taxpayer their taxpayer who successfully participated in the tax governance framework will be granted the following benefits if these companies are audited by the IRAS. Uh, number one, a one-time extended grace period for voluntary disclosure of corporate tax and withholding tax errors. And number two, a one-time waiver of penalties of 5% penalty for voluntary disclosure of prior years of the income tax and withholding tax errors. In Malaysia, we note that the penalty rate here is uh, at least 15% based on the IRB's audit framework. Uh, if there's any additional tax uh, discovered during the IRB tax audit. So this question, I think, has to be addressed to Indian Jafni. Uh, is there any plan by IRB to grant similar benefits to those participants of IRB's PCGF as part of the campaign you know, to promote the PCG in Malaysia? Indian Jafni? Hi. Thank you for the question. So as for now, we have not included the similar additional benefits uh, to the participants uh, in our program as given by RIS. Uh, as you can see, we are still in the pilot project phase and we would uh, rather concentrating on our scheme at the moment. And actually we believe that our taxpayers uh, will get a lot of benefits and perks by joining our program at this in here, so to speak. So as you, as you can see, uh, our TCGF program offered four main benefits. One is on the re reduced securitization of the uh, compliant activities. And we further said that when you join the program, we will not audit or investigate you. That one thing. Yeah. I think that one is not also offered by IRS. And then we expedite the tax refunds for the company that joined the program. And we have a dedicated tech officer assigned to this company for any uh, queries or any uh, clarification that you needed from Hasil. And the fourth benefit is on the priority consideration. Uh, I think I mentioned before, like for example, during the TCG program, the taxpayer discovered there's an error not intentionally or mistake, not internationally, that we can provide consideration for lower penalty or no penalty depends on the case by case basis. Yeah. Yeah. All so right. as now I guess there are already quite a list of benefits in in in, in the existing TCGF. Uh, of course, uh, the impact payer if if there are more the merrier. So probably that will be for future consideration then. Thank you for your answer. And also to add further, even though the benefits offered by Hase are not similar to IRIS, I think we has uh, provide a very comparable advantage and benefits for those that want to join the PCG program. Yeah. Absolutely, I agree with that. Okay, uh, shall we move on to the next question? 
TCGD, uh, this is on the video process. So in the TCGF, we noticed that after completing the step one on getting ready, upon satisfying some query breaker six and completion of query sub-assessment, the taxpayer uh, need to appoint an independent reviewer in under step two. Um, I think some of the questions here you have mentioned, but we just go through them again and maybe Mani can take on this question. Number one, who qualifies as an independent reviewer? Number two, when should the independent reviewer conduct the review? And the third question is that are there any prescribed methodology for the independent reviewer to adhere to when conducting the review? In terms of the first questions, who qualify as an independent reviewer? I think IRB has uh, uh, put certain points and, and, and includes that uh, things into the frameworks and the guideline as well. It includes approved tax agents or the in-house uh, internal audit team whose members are accredited uh, tax practitioner. But the accredited tax practitioner, that will be the question mark there. Uh, who are the persons that are qualified as accredited uh, tax practitioner? So based on the latest dialogue that's uh, with the IRB, so, so long as the person is a member of a tax professional body and poses at least five years experience in taxations, then uh, uh, he or she could be the accredited uh, tax practitioner. You also can imagine that if, let's say, uh, when we talk about the tax experience in taxation, so a lot of people may ask uh, what kind of experience that you need uh, and, and all the detailed questions. You try to imagine that if, let's say, a, pers a person does not have enough uh, tax updates or, or tax experience, uh, then how a reviewer to assess the adequacy and the effectiveness of the internal control put in place. So that is something important. So in terms of uh, question two, when should the independent reviewer conduct a review? So far, there is no fixed timeline being mentioned in the TCGF or the guideline or FAQ. But from practical perspective, uh, the role of the independent reviewer is to assess the adequacy and the effectiveness. These are the two major components. So if let's say a company just implement or put in place the corporate governance, that the tax governance, can you uh, uh, engage an independent reviewer? Can you start the independent reviewer immediately? So that may not be effective. And certain tax controls could be on monthly basis, like payments of the withholding tax, or certain things could be on annual basis, like annual tax filing, that kind of thing. So, uh, it is recommended, it is advisable to have a cooling period of 12 months, at least let the control run first and test the effectiveness of the control in place to see uh, how effective of that. And then one more thing that you can, uh, uh, what I also want to highlight here is, uh, just now Inchit Japni also mentioned that 2024 is the uh, full implementation uh, year for the TCGF. So do we have more, much, lots of time on that part? Because you need to take into consideration that after you put in, uh, uh, put in place of all the tax governance, then you still need to wait for a cooling period of 12 months to run the process procedure first to test it, then engage the independent reviewer. By then, 2024 is already there. So you may not have enough time. You may not have lots of time for, for, for putting and participating. You may need to take actions earlier and plan earlier on that. Uh, on the third questions in terms of the prescribed methodology, uh, uh, currently uh, different organizations or the companies may adopt different governance practices uh, that is depending on the nature of the business, the size, the complexity, uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, things that you need to take into consideration. So we recognize that uh, certain elements you must be there. But it's also there are certain flexibility in applications of the principle of tax governance. So there is no fixed methodologies. So you, it is an evidence base. You must provide evidence that how do you apply the control in your uh, tax governance. Thank you, Mengkui. Yeah, I guess the independent review has to be somebody who is competent and experienced enough. And of course, you talk about if somebody or a company wish to, uh, you know, start the uh, TCGF application in uh, 2024, uh, it is now actually time to start, you know, not wait until you know, to this 2024 because the 12 months or you are suggesting 12 months as, as a cooling period for, for them to, for the, all the controls to sink into the organization. So I guess that's the main point from what you've been saying. Uh, maybe we would like to move on to number five. 
question number five on the status renewal. So we all know that um, this GF status is valid only for a period of three years for those who've been awarded this, uh, this GF status. So question is, what's next? You know, during the three years, uh, is there a requirement to undertake annual independent review? If so, is there a requirement to submit the report to the RRB? Uh, second point is that after the three years period, what needs to be done if the participants wish to renew the status? What are the renewal process? And the last question on this is that, are there any circumstances where RRB view during the three years period revoke the TCGF status? And if so, what are the triggering events? Uh, I guess these three questions have to be addressed to Inja Japni, who is more appropriate to answer this from authorities' point of view. Yeah, Inja Japni. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, the answer is yes. Uh, during the TCG program period, uh, the organization is required to get the annual independent review, meaning that the review uh, annually will also contain whether they have uh, done the control testing on the TCF, the tax control framework of the organization. And the report actually shall only be submitted to, our, our, uh, to HASIL when we request it. It's not, uh, you have to do it, the review, but then uh, it depends whether we need, uh, HASIL needs to view the report or not. So every year there will be a report, is it? Yeah, yes, so yes. annually you have to prepare the uh, the annual review report. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then um, in terms of the renewal, so the organization need to inform uh, HASIL of its intention to renew the program in writing, yeah, in writing uh, 12 months uh, before the program ends. Yeah. They say, for example, like uh, uh, we take example of a uh, pilot project that we currently do. They say one company, we award them to join the TCG program starting uh, January 2020, uh, sorry, 2023, right? So there will be three years, 23, 24, 25. So uh, in 2024, the company is, is still interested to renew uh, the, uh, they are to renew their program, the TCG program, and they have to inform us in, in writing. So, um, and then uh, regarding the revoke, uh, what you call the triggering events, yeah? actually when we award the organization that to join the TCG program, we, we provide a letter or certificate that include the information of the program's terms and condition. Okay. So if the organization fail to follow that terms and condition that result may result in the non-eligibility for the program benefits or most probably having the status uh, being revoked. Yeah. As far as you don't breach the terms stated yeah. by the RD in the letter, that's, that's fine, right? So uh, that, is why, that is why we really encourage uh, the organization that joined the program to full, fully use the voluntary disclosure right. yeah, initiative. Going back, going back to the earlier question on the renewal of status, right? You yeah. mentioned that there has to be a 12 months uh, ahead of the expiry to yeah, correct. put in a request. Is it because you also need to take eight to 12 months of time to, you know, uh, do the exercise that we yeah, exactly. about? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. So, so uh, we it repeat wouldn't again, get easier, it wouldn't get easier for a company who, you know, already into the second round of this like, status? Uh, that is why uh, we already give a sufficient period for three years. Right. So there will be uh, maybe significant changes in the organization in these three years that maybe we need to look it, into it uh, that may relate to this tax risk, tax complaint risk from our perspective. Yeah. That's why we need this 12 months before uh, the yeah, end of the give sufficient time to both parties to yeah. work out. And, right. and, and in order not to drag, you know, uh, beyond the, the, the three years of priority date. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Okay, uh, we would like to quickly move on to the six because I am convinced that this is our 
time is now 12 o'clock. Uh, this is the last question on the panel discussion. Uh, we are looking at getting ready for TCG. Many companies uh, would have already had some form of tax control systems in place, even without complying with the TCG. And why is that so? They need to also continue to comply with various tax compliance matters. And the way that they have put in is uh, based on individual companies' own standards. So with the new guidelines provided by TCG, it is now time for this company to review the existing tax controls and bring their standards to be aligned, more aligned with the TCGF standard. So the questions I have here are that, what are the common challenges faced by the new adopters you foresee in the initial implementation st stage of uh, TCG? And then also, what are the next course of action given that the existing tax control is not adequate after undertaking the preliminary self-assessment? Uh, maybe I would like to ask both uh, speakers, I'll start off with uh, Mani first. Mani, your take on this. Okay, in terms of the uh, common challenges uh, faced by the new adopters, I think uh, the first thing is to, ki to kickstart, you must get the buy-in from the stakeholders uh, because this will request resources, manpower, money. <laughs> so especially with the current business environments of the rising of the business costs and shortage of labor. <laughs> so and, and then the stakeholders may not be able to see the immediate desired outcome as well. And they may not be able to make the compa quick comparisons in terms of quantitative uh, test perspective. So they could only see the qualitative and it is more on in the future. So get the buy-in of the stakeholder is one of the common challenges the first common challenge. The second one is if the company would like to start, how to start, where to start? That is a practical question, uh, 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 common challenges faced by the uh, companies as well. And then for this TCG, is everything is talk about documentation, talk about evidence-based because you may exercise those internal control, but do you have the documentations to prove that, to show that internal controls? So that could be another challenge. And the fourth one, it could uh, it is on the substance over form. It is the other way around. For certain companies, they could have the publications of the tax strategies, uh, uh, adoptions of the tax uh, uh, methods, but in terms of the practicability, that may not exercise the internal control uh, from practical perspective. That could be another type of the challenge. I, I guess there are various challenges from the IRB side as well, especially on the time frame given in terms of uh, conclude and complete the TCG review. And then in terms of what are the cause of actions uh, could be needed. If let's say your company only covers certain items under TCGF, it is really advisable to review, to get someone to assess the internet control now and make all the items to make it as a comprehensive and complete uh, tax governance in place. Uh, that is uh, our comment. And pass it to you, Inchet Daphne. Yeah, uh, I would like to concur with uh, my statement on to get the approval from the board. Because uh, from our experience uh, in the pilot project, uh, we can see that uh, most of the organization of the company that we invited, uh, uh, the main challenge is to get the approval for the board. Yeah? So sometimes it takes less time, but sometimes it takes a lot of time. It depends on the structure of the organization. That's the main challenge. So I concur what uh, my you said. And then in terms of the preparation, I think, uh, because uh, as you can see, the what we have uh, in our TCGF, the six important things that uh, the organization must have in their TCGF is like, uh, for example, on the roles and responsibility. So, uh, and also on the tax control framework, on the control testing. So all these uh, should be in place in, uh, clearly stated in the TCGF for the organization. So for the company to, uh, from uh, our uh, engagement uh, with the organization that uh, involved in the pilot project, some already have, but we can see that already have their tax governance in place. In fact, they already can uh, glean uh, different departments that handling the tax matters in one integrated system. But then there are also some organizations that they they already have what we can say, like for example, 
this tax department in their organization that only handle corporate tax and the HR department handle the uh, uh, PC, potongan cukai berjadual yeah, the responsibility of the employer and the other department uh, more on in terms of uh, what we call like for example uh, the sales department the purchase department they do have in place in terms of the tax risk control tax risk management but that they are not integrated so from my view is for organization that already have this tax governance in place it's easier for them to start and to join our tcg program as compared to the company that have to start from the scratch to integrate all these uh, functional roles and uh, responsibility uh, in one uh, integrated system and to be documented yeah yeah obviously there are uh, challenges when one were to start adopting a tcg and of course uh, depending on your readiness you may yeah. have different level of challenges of course uh, in the end the rb is always here to help to the taxpayers to overcome uh, some of these challenges that they had uh, through uh, the offices who are friendly there. Uh, with that, I would like to conclude the panel discussion and uh, we shall move on to this QA, if you don't mind. So, okay. I think the first question being asked is that how many companies have committed to join TCGF uh, from the pilot project? Uh, Japanese, this question has to be addressed to you. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, for the T pilot project of the TCG program, we only selected uh, companies that fulfill the criteria we have set, especially on the, their compliance record and also on their size. So uh, I cannot disclose how many, but that just I want to say that we have received a very good response, positive res, res, uh, response from our uh, respondents, and also we also receive for the organisation that feel they already have tax governance in their organisation to also join because although we said uh, in phase one during the phase one. It's more on the pilot project, but then we still open for any organization that feels that they are ready. Remember this first step? Are you ready? Yeah, but, right. So if you are ready, then you can uh, we call send a letter of intention to us uh, to say that you want to join our TCG program, the pilot program for the TCG. So either they are selected or they can actually come forward to you for this right. pilot. Yeah. Uh, if uh, if selected, the process is like this. If your company is selected, so normally we will uh, call the company to our office to have what we call engagement, and we provide uh, a best uh, an overall presentation on our TCGF and also the TCG program, and we we'll hand we we'll hand over the letter offer for them to join. Yeah. Yep. Okay, uh, that answered the first question. I would like to move on to the second question. How does ECG impact the corporation tax? I guess the question is asking if you have a good set of uh, 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 ECG program, uh, which may be inclusive of this tax governance, would there be the better uh, chances that your corporate tax will have lower risk Maybe uh, uh, Mani, would you like to answer this question? Um, I think for this ESG topic is uh, very big and our today uh, sessions is focusing on tax governance and that element. Uh, and for tax governance will definitely uh, to improve the tax uh, compliance level uh, of the taxpayers. This is the first thing. So uh, it will reduce all the risk uh, or error, unintentionally uh, errors or mistakes uh, in preparations of the tax computations if all the internal controls are in place. Uh, and then for, for the other elements like tax incentive could come in that the deductibility of the uh, tax governance related expenses would it be deductible. Uh, currently, it is not deductible based on the FAQ uh, replies uh, from the IRB. So hopefully the IRB could reconsider from that part <laughs> whether, whether in order to encourage 
more people to put in the to implement the tax governance would the IRB consider uh, to allow special deductions on the special costs that to be incurred. Yeah, at the moment, I think the RBC is not deductible. Yeah. So it would be good that it is deductible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, can we move on to the next question? Uh, how do we apply to join TCGF program directly to the RRB? Or the other way is to wire close professional assistance. Uh, I understand there's a cooling period. Are uh, there any initial steps or gaps can be found in IR, uh, LHDN's website? Uh, Maybe Mani, you would like to take this question first? Uh, in IRB website, I think you can find the frameworks, the guidelines, the FAQ that being published in the IRB website. Uh, uh, you may uh, participate the TCGF program directly with the IRB uh, by going through the getting ready stage, stage one, then to get the independence review, uh, that stage to be done. If let's say you have the internal uh, audit team that's with accredited tax uh, experience, tax uh, practitioner, then you would be able to participate the TCGF program directly or if you work together with Crow, then I think definitely we would be able to help on both stages on getting ready and the independent review. Thanks, Mani. Uh, um, I would like uh, to add to that. Yeah, so for yes. any interested uh, companies or organizations that want to join the TCG program, uh, can just email to us the letter of intention and email to TCG at uh, Hase.gov.my. I think the, uh, the, the address also we already spelled out in the, our TCG guidelines, guidelines to the TCG framework. And yeah. yeah. Okay, so there's a direct link that you can access to in terms of RMD's uh, website, and the specific person, of course, is the Japanese team. Okay, I will quickly move on to the next question. The question is, uh, goes like this Are SMEs ready for the framework? and pursue the ESG program. I think specifically we are talking about tax governance. Uh, will tax incentives sufficient to drive action? Um, Mandy, would you like to answer this question? Uh, our current tax incentive is on other elements within ESG, but not on uh, implementing tax governance. We hope the governments uh, would rethink about that. Would there allow special deductions, double deductions, or certain financial aids in terms of implementing tax governance? We look forward to hear uh, good news from the IRB or the MOF on this. <laughs> yeah. And what about the are the SME ready to pursue for this DCGF? Okay, I think even though as a SME, uh, for certain SME, then uh, if like if they are expecting to grow their business in the coming future, or their for certain SME, their business size or the the size of their turnover could be very big. Their control could be good in place as well. Then uh, they could uh, conduct certain review and 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 try to look into have you satisfied the prerequisites uh criteria, and then can you uh you, you also can do your own self review checklist and see which are the controls internal controls that you are not satisfied with, and then um and get consultants to help you to do an assessment. Uh, that is something possible as well. But uh, whether SME are uh, generally. Uh, SME may not be that ready, I would say, because most of the SMEs are really uh, the finance team will do the uh, extracts from the GL themselves then to make the decisions themselves and <laughs> everything is under one department and there's no segregations of duties and role and responsibilities. Yeah, okay. thanks uh, for that. I have the next question, which I think you have already answered. Is this program free of charge? Yes, it is free of charge. And is it on a voluntary basis? Yes, it is on a voluntary basis. So I will answer that for on behalf of the speaker. Uh, next question, you already published a sample of TCG report for taxpayers to refer to. So it did just me. This question is still about sample. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, these are the usual uh, uh, favorite questions we ask when we conduct our uh, seminar or webinar on this topic, TCGF. So uh, in developing the tax governance, right, in the, any organizations, uh, as for now, we will not provide specific format because uh, the organization need to refer back to their internal control. I think this one also been mentioned by Mangi just now, uh, and also their tax risk management framework or guides. Uh, so 
as long as they are when they develop the tax governance they meet our expectation that we already spell out in our tax corporate governance framework so that can meet our two reviews the adequacy review on the six uh, building blocks of the tcf and also on the effective uh, review yeah especially on the tax control uh, framework yeah I have to refer to our documentation as long as you meet that one then this should be okay okay sure so no sample yet at the moment no. um, maybe i would like to just go on to the next question okay is this program only for plc's or all Malaysian companies including SMEs? money would you like to answer I think currently, uh, for the part, uh, uh, currently in the in the IRB guidelines, it mentions that the companies that fill the criteria like large companies or uh, PLC with uh, turnover more than one hundred million and above, company which has won the best taxpayer awards, government linked company, state owned enterprises, compliant taxpayers. If let's say the the companies or the participations that have uh, medium to complex structure and business models uh, engage its voluminous transactions, place emphasis on the tax risk management, and then rely on the ex uh, extensive inbuilt controls. So in short, is if let's say you have certain internal controls uh, in place, then like Inchi Japanese mentions, you can write in uh, to the IRB and participate in programs. I just want to add uh, uh, some points relating to the sample reports. I think IR IRB has, uh, uh, okay, currently there are a few companies that have done uh, that publications as well um, uh, on the tax governance or on the uh, their approach, the Brahad approach uh, to tax. So that may give you certain guidance, but eventually this is just a guidance a framework only because every company will have different internal control. So the write up all these things, the tax strategies could be very different from one company to the other. Yeah, thanks, Manny. I think we are causing a uh, uh, behind time, but anyway, I think one or two questions are still interesting. I would like to continue with this Q&A if uh, the speakers don't mind. Okay, uh, this, there's this letter, uh, this question for in the Japanese. For companies who have yet to receive letter from the IRB for TCGF participation, how can we check with the IRB customer care and whether our company is included in the pilot program? In the Japanese. Yeah, uh, I think I mentioned uh, before this, for the pilot project, uh, when once we selected the uh, companies for the uh, pilot project, we will uh, issue a letter uh, offer letter offer for them to join but then the way we issue is not by post or by uh, email so we will invite the companies to our uh, to the branch that handle their file uh, currently only three branches we handle which are the CIK Cawangan Industri Usus the CPCB Cawangan Pembayar Cuka Besar and also CCM Jawangan to come international. So we invite uh, their representative for the company selected to our office and we brief, uh, give, uh, we provide presentation and further explanation on the TCGF and also on the uh, TCG program. Then we will issue the letter of offer. Yeah. So it's not like you can, uh, because the company will know once we approach that. Thank you. Okay, I think that uh, answers that question. Uh, there is one last question coming up. Maybe I'll just ask that any deadline for company to submit application to enroll into TCGF pilot project? I think this is also for the job. Deadline for company to submit application. As for, for now, there enroll. is no deadline. Okay. Yeah, right. But then I just want to make clarification on this. Just please make sure that the organization that want to join already have their tax governance in place. I think that one also mentioned by Mandi. Because yeah. if you don't have this tax governance in place, so it will take a lot of time for you to comply with what we have set in our, our expectation in our tax corporate governance framework. Yeah. Okay. You have to be ready first. <laughs> yeah. Right? Otherwise, it will take a long way, you know. Yeah. You know, Okay, I think that is a, that concludes the Q&A. That was 
going to be the last question and that concludes our Q&A. Uh, to just uh, end this uh, discussion, I would just like to uh, say that there's a growing expectation on the part of directors that the board is accountable for defining the corporate group's tax strategy and should proactively develop a proper tax governance, governance policy and internal processes to manage their tax risk. So I hope that uh, you all have some good takeaways from today's sharing session with uh, Inder Japni and Mandi on how TCGF is able to guide your companies in the tax governance area. Uh, lastly, I would just like to thank Japni and Mandi for their insightful sharing of subject matter on TCGF. We all agree that TCGF is the way uh, going forward, and I hope all of you have benefited through the discussion we had for the last uh, two hours. Uh, I'd like to end with this session with this statement that I copy from uh, TCGF, which goes like this. Good tax governance is a subset of good corporate governance. So with that, uh, thank you everyone, and I hope you have enjoyed this session as much as I do. So I'd like to pass uh, this session back to our MC, Latira. So uh, thank you everyone. Thank you to our speakers uh, for wonderful sharing and information. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, before we close uh, our session today, do not forget to subscribe to our mailing list. Uh, else we will send you uh, regular updates, you know, such as quick content, such as tax alert, regulatory updates, and exclusive event invitation just for you. And not to forget um, to join our upcoming event uh, on the uh, next uh, on this 29th of November, which is, is Nightmares or CFO Nightmares, Accounting, Auditing, Taxes, and Personal Liabilities at uh, Bang Sasa. So we have an interesting lineup. So I bet you don't want to miss here. So click on the link uh, or maybe you can just uh, scan the QR code. So that marks the end of our session today. Thank you very much for taking your time joining us. And if you have any further questions or you are interested in a consultation with our expert, get in touch with us and we will be happy to speak with you. And once again, thank you for joining us and don't forget to exercise your voting right in election this Saturday. Thank you everyone.